Hello ladies and gentlemen, we're going to finish up our A2 factoring. Before we get back into those rational exponents, I'm going to give you some problems that are extremely factorable just to kind of get you thinking like you can really still go on a lot of these problems. So the first problem here, you can see we have 72x to the fifth minus 120. Okay, so there's four terms. Anytime I see four terms, I'm thinking, okay, factor by grouping. So I'm going to find the GCF of the first two terms and the GCF of the second two terms. So what goes into both 72 and 120? I think it's 8, and then these both have x cubed. So 8x cubed is my GCF, and then I have 9x squared minus 16. Bring down your minus sign, the GCF between those two, they don't really have anything in common, so we'll just say 1, 9x squared, and now it's minus 16 because we factored out the negative. So you'll notice we have 9x squared minus 16 as a binomial factor, and we would be left with 8x cubed minus 1. So these are called highly factorable because it's not going to stop anytime soon. These both keep going. You've got a quadratic and you've got a cubic. Let's first start with this guy. Uh, it's a minus sign and they're both perfect squares. Oh, that's dots. This is 3x plus 4, 3x minus 4. And then we've got a cubic over here, 8x cubed minus 1. Those are both perfect cubes. Oh, that's a difference of cubes. So the cube root of 8x cubed is 2x. The cube root of 1 is 1. So I remember I have my a, b, a squared. 2x squared is 4x squared. It's 2x squared is 4x squared. Their product is 2x, and 1 squared is 1. So since this is a sum of cubes, we're going to say same, opposite, always positive. Now, this might be tempting to factor, but it's never going to be factorable. If you use sum or difference of cubes, this trinomial you get is always going to be prime, assuming you've already done GCF. So we've got linear, 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 and a quadratic that's prime, so that is now completely factored. Let's try another one. Now, this is a six-term polynomial, and we don't do a lot of six-term polynomials, but we're still going to factor by grouping. However, when we factor by grouping, we're going to factor groups of three. So we're going to factor that, those two using factor by grouping. So I'm going to find the GCF of the first three terms. The GCF of the first three terms is just x to the fourth. And now I have x squared plus 10x plus 25. And then I'm going to do the same thing here, bring down the minus sign. The GCF of these three terms, I think 16 goes into four, 25 times zero. So the GCF is 16. Now I have x squared minus 10x. Oh, it's going to be plus 10x because I factored out the negative, and then plus 25. So you'll notice that I have a trinomial in common. So if I have a trinomial in common, I'm going to factor that out. x squared plus 10x plus 25. That's my GCF, and I'm left with x to the fourth minus 16. Now, this is definitely going to keep going because I know that that is a quadratic that I can factor. In fact, the numbers that multiply to 25 and add to 10 are 5x and 5x. So I'll go ahead and do that. I'm splitting the middle. So, oh, that's the same thing. That's x plus 5, x plus 5. So I'll just write it as x plus 5 squared. So that's this, but I still also have to deal with x to the fourth minus 16. So to do that, uh, those are both, actually those are both perfect squares. So I'm going to go ahead and say it's x squared plus 4 and x squared minus 4. Uh, the square root of x to the 4th is x squared, and the square root of 16 is 4. Now, x squared plus 4 can't do anything, so I'll bring that down onto the bottom. But x squared minus 4 is dots. That's x plus 2, x minus 2. So I have x plus 5 quantity squared, x squared plus 4, and then x plus 2, x minus 2. Again, that one just keeps going couple more. Holy cow. Again, six terms, so I'm going to play the same game. Find the GCF of the first three and the GCF of the second three. The GCF of the first three, they're all even and they all have x cubed. So then I have x squared minus 6x plus 9. Bring down your minus. GCF of these two is again 16. x squared, now it's going to be minus 8x. No, 6, 16, yeah, 6x plus 16 times 9 is 144, which is good because these are the same. So that's my GCF. I'm going to factor out x squared minus 6x plus 9, and I'm left with 2x cubed minus 16. Now looking at this, I realize now 
I didn't follow my own advice of factoring out the big GCF first. But that's okay, I'm going to fix it right now, I'm going to factor it out of these two terms. So the big GCF is actually 2. And then this would then be x cubed minus 8, which is a difference of cubes. But let's also focus on this guy. This is a perfect square. If I split the middle, the numbers that multiply to 9 and add to negative 6 are negative 3 and negative 3. And I end up with x minus 3, minus 3, x minus 3. I, guys, I assume you can factor a quadratic, so I know I'm going quick with this. But if you can't factor a quadratic, you need to go back to the previous lessons and like review some algebra 1 stuff. So we've got x minus 3 squared, the 2 still out front. And then this is a difference of cubes. So the cube root of x cubed is x. The cube root of 8 is 2. Now it's x squared, 2x, and 4. Again, we just did this in the previous lesson, so this should be very familiar. Minus, plus, plus. So I have 2, x minus 2, x squared plus 2x plus 4, and a couple x minus 3s. Again, very highly factorable polynomial. One more. Now, this one you could do a couple ways because x to the 6th is both a perfect cube and a perfect square. But I'm going to tell you that you want to do the perfect square first. We're going to do this as dots first. So the square root of x to the 6th is x cubed. So it's going to be x cubed plus 1, x cubed minus 1. That means you end up having a sum and difference of cubes. The cube root of x cubed is x. The cube root of 1 is 1. x squared, x, 1. And it's going to be the same thing over here, x1, x squared, x1, but the signs are just different. So if it's same, opposite, always positive, that's the first one. Here this is same, opposite, always positive, that's the second one. Uh, and that's all you can do. These aren't going to be factorable, so you are, you're all finished. So those are highly factorable problems. Those are good sort of practice, like if you can do these, then you obviously know a lot of factoring skills. So we need to finish the notes from the other day, and these are where we're going to now do the rational exponents. This looks really scary, but if you get the first step, after that it's going to be easy. It's all about getting the first step. When you see that you have a negative exponent, a negative rational exponent, the easy thing about it is you're not going to have any choice. That is what you're going to factor out. We are definitely factoring out x to the negative 1 half. I'm not even going to think about it. I'm factoring that out for sure because it's the smallest. It's the most negative. I'm going to factor that out. That's just how you approach the problem. If you see that you have a negative exponent, factor that out. Now, I still need to look for GCF. So there is a GCF here between 3, 15, and 18, and that is a 3. So I'm going to factor out a 3. So I'm factoring out 3x to the negative 1 half. Now, I've already taken out the 3, but I'm going to have an x. And this is where we need to kind of have a little sidebar here. When you're factoring, you're dividing. So I'm really doing x to the 3 halves divided by x to the negative 1 half, which, if you remember your exponent rules, is x to the 3 halves minus negative 1 half, because you subtract when you're dividing. The reason this is so weird is because you're subtracting a negative and then you end up actually adding 3 halves to 1 half and you end up with 3 plus 1 is 4 halves, so this is x squared. If you factor a negative 1 half out of 3 halves, then what you're going to do is subtract negative 1 half, which is the same as adding 1 half. 3 halves plus 1 half is 4 halves, which is 2 whole. So this actually is x squared minus 3 times 5 gives you 15 and this is the same game 1 half minus negative 1 half is the same as 1 half plus 1 half which is 1 whole so this is x to the first you're subtracting the exponent and since it's negative you end up adding it which is very weird plus 3 times 6 is 18 and I've already factored out the whole x to the negative 1 half so I don't need to worry about that if you can get past that first step of factoring out the negative, you'll notice that this actually is pretty easy now because it's just a quadratic. So we're just going to split the middle. We're going to find numbers that multiply to 6 and add to negative 5. So that'd be negative 3 and negative 2x. Be careful, it's not 6 and 1. x, x minus 3, minus 2, x minus 3. And now I have x minus 2, x minus 3, and then my GCF was 3x to the negative 1 half. And that is 
completely factored. Let's try another one. First, look at the 2 and the 6. I'm bringing out a 2. Then, I know they both have an x plus 1, and since it's negative, that's what I'm factoring out. I'm not thinking about it. It's negative. That's what I'm factoring out. So, if you factor all that out, what is left? Well, we factored out the whole term, so we're going to put a 1 in there. It's just like a placeholder because we factored out the whole thing. Plus, 2 times 3 is 6, and then I have to figure out how many x plus 1s I have. Again, 3 halves minus negative 1 half is 3 halves plus 1 half. So that's 4 halves, which is 2 whole. 3 halves minus negative 1 half is 3 halves plus 1 half, which is 4 halves, which is 2 whole. So it's we have 2 whole x plus 1s. I know that is weird. But factor out the negative, and then you end up adding the exponents. Negative 1 half will be a, become a positive. So 1 half plus 3 halves is 4 halves, 2 whole. Now we've got to simplify what's in red, the inside, so you need to be careful. This is an exponent, which means you must address that first. We're going to deal with the 3 last. Okay, I have 1 plus 3 times. I'm going to first deal with the exponent, so I'm going to FOIL this out. That will be x squared plus x plus x makes 2x plus 1. It is not x squared plus 1. If it is, then you don't know how to FOIL and you are in trouble. Write it out and expand it. Now we'll distribute 3x squared plus 6x plus 3, which is 3x squared plus 6x plus 4. I don't think anything multiplies to 12 and adds to 6, so that's simplified. But I still have my GCF, x plus 1 to the negative 1 half. Let's try a couple more. Now, I would suggest that you try and do them first. So if you do them ahead of me, that's always a good thing. So if you haven't tried them, you try them. Then see if I get if you get them right. I'm going to first do the 4. So 4 is the GCF between 4, 8, and 32. And if I see that it's negative, that's what I'm factoring out. X to the negative 1 third. So now we've got, we brought out the 4, but we have X to the, I'm just going to say, 5 thirds plus 1 third is 6 thirds. That's 2. Minus. 4 times 2 is 8. 2 thirds plus 1 third is 1. So x to the first. Minus 4 times 8 is 32. And I already factored out the uh, x to the negative 1 third. So look, you get a quadratic. Nice. What multiplies to negative 8 and adds to negative 2? That would be negative 4 and positive 2. So my GCF between the first two terms is x. My GCF between the second two terms is 2. So I have x plus 2, x minus 4. And don't forget, you have your 4x to the negative 1 third out front. So that is your completely factored answer. Let's do one more. 2 and x don't have anything in common, but if I see there's a negative, that's what I'm factoring out. 1 plus x to the negative 1 half. So what's on the inside? Well, I still need a 2, and I still have some 1 plus x's. 1 half plus 1 half, because minus negative 1 half is adding. 1 half plus 1 half is 1. Okay, good. Minus x, and I already took care of uh, the negative one half, so I'm actually good there. So on the inside, I just need to simplify. Two plus two x minus x will end up being just two. Uh, I'll write it as two x minus one x is x, and then plus two. And you still have your uh, GCF of one plus x to the negative one half power. So if you see that you have a negative exponent, that is what you are factoring out. When you factor it out, you got to just remember that factoring is dividing, and dividing is exponent rule is subtraction. So you subtract the negative, you end up adding. It's very weird, but you kind of get the hang of it. And the nice thing is, you don't have to think, you always just factor out the negative every time. So we're going to do some practice here in a minute. Um, hopefully that helps, and we'll, uh, I guess, good luck.